Hello grade 11s, let's get right into this past paper on intermolecular forces and their effects on physical properties. If you haven't subscribed to my videos, please subscribe. I do chemistry, math, loads of exam practice questions. Let's jump right in. In this question, they're giving me the names of six different substances, their molecular or their chemical formulae, and their boiling point. And obviously it is important to note that the boiling point of a substance is linked to the type of intermolecular forces that exist between the molecules of that substance. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point because more energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces. So 3.1, three marks, explain why ethanol is soluble in water. Refer to the relative strength of intermolecular forces in ethanol and in water. So you need to read the question carefully. They're asking why is it soluble? So we need to speak about solubility. So why ethanol can dissolve in water. And they say refer to the relative strengths of intermolecular forces of both of them. So you need to tell me what intermolecular forces exist in ethanol and water and compare the strengths and speak about why that is the reason ethanol is soluble in water. So how you would do this is as follows. Step one would be to mention the intermolecular forces of both molecules that we're comparing. So I said ethanol, which is an alcohol, is a polar molecule with hydrogen bonding and London forces. Remember, all of my substances have London forces. So ethanol is hydrogen bonding and London forces. Water has hydrogen bonding and London forces. You could combine these two bullet points into one sentence by saying that both ethanol and water are polar molecules and they both have hydrogen bonding and London forces between their molecules. They're the same. Then you need to compare the strength of the mentioned intermolecular forces. So you would say these forces are the same in relative strength. They both have hydrogen bonding, same strength. And then lastly, you're going to say that because they have a similar strength, so because they have comparable relative strength in intermolecular forces, they will dissolve. And this is basically the solubility rule, which states that like dissolves in like. So if you have similar strengths of intermolecular forces, you will dissolve in each other. That is why something with hydrogen bonding like ethanol can dissolve in something with hydrogen bonding like water. It's also the reason why something with not a nonpolar molecule with London forces only, like bromine, for example, cannot dissolve in water because bromine has London forces, which is weaker, and water has hydrogen bonding, which is stronger. They're not relative, they're not, they don't have the same relative strength. So that's unlike solubility, so they won't dissolve. Our next question says 3.2, explain why the boiling point of iodine is higher than that of bromine. So both are given on the table. Iodine has a higher boiling point, 184,3. Bromine has a lower boiling point, 58.8. Refer to the intermolecular forces present in each substance in the explanation. So again, the answer, your answer must include the intermolecular forces of bromine, the intermolecular forces of iodine, and tell me why the one has a higher boiling point than the other. The first thing that I want you to, want to remind you of is that bromine is Br2, iodine is I2. These are diatomic molecules. They're amongst some of the diatomic molecules that you need to know. Remember, have no fear of ice cold beer. So the list of diatomic elements or molecules are all of these ones over here. But back to what this means. So because they're diatomic, it means that if I have to work out the difference in electronegativity for their bonds, the difference in electronegativity for these bonds will be zero because the electronegativity of bromine, it'll be bromine and bromine. So it'll be the same electronegativity minus each other, zero. And same thing here, difference in electronegativity will be zero, which means nonpolar bond, which immediately means a nonpolar molecule. And you should know that if substances are nonpolar, they have only London forces between their molecules. I have a video. Um, about all the different types of intermolecular forces and how you know which substances have which intermolecular forces. I'll link it below. But both bromine and iodine both have London-only forces. So they have the same intermolecular forces. You might know London forces as van der Waal forces or induced dipole forces or induced dipole, induced dipole forces, but you can call it London forces. So first step, mention the intermolecular forces of both. But now, if they both have the same intermolecular force, why does one of them have a much higher boiling point than the other? There must be something else that sets them apart. 
the difference between bromine and iodine will be their relative molecular mass. So if you look at the atomic mass number of bromine, it's 80, and of iodine, it's 127. So if you, were, if you have to work out the molecular mass of each of them, you will see that iodine has a greater molecular mass, 127 times 2, compared to that of bromine, which would be 80 times 2. And if you have a larger molecular mass, what that means is you have a bigger surface area. So basically, there's more space as such for London forces. So you'll have more London forces, more intermolecular forces. And if you have more intermolecular forces, they will therefore be stronger. That makes sense. So iodine, because of its higher molecular mass, higher surface area, will have more London forces, therefore stronger London forces. So take note how in my explanation, I explain the difference between them. So you say that they have the same intermolecular forces, but then you explain the difference. So iodine is a larger molecular mass, and that implication is that it has a higher surface area, more London forces, and something that is essential to mention is the strength of the forces. The question asked us to mention strength. You must always mention strength. And something else that I want you to get used to doing now, because it will carry over into metric, is as soon as you men mention strength, you must mention energy. So because iodine has stronger intermolecular forces, it will require more energy to overcome those forces, to separate those molecules. And that's why iodine has a higher boiling point. Our next question, 3.3, .3, says explain why phosphine will evaporate faster. Evaporate being the key word here. Faster than ammonia by referring to the type of intermolecular force present in each substance. Again, they're telling you that they want you to speak about intermolecular forces. But beyond that, we're going to speak about intermolecular forces, compare strength, compare energy, and that will explain why one will evaporate faster than the other. This is worth four marks. Now, one thing to note before we get into the question is that ammonia has a higher boiling point than phosphine. You can see now, just remember, it's higher because it's less negative, okay? So a phosphine has a lower boiling point, it's more negative. And here are the molecular formulas for both ammonia and phosphine, which will help me figure out the type of intermolecular forces present between their molecules. Now, drawing the Lewis dot diagrams is not necessarily part of the answer, okay? But it does help me look at each molecule and determine whether they are polar or non-polar. And if you look at phosphine and ammonia, you'll see that they actually have the same shape, okay? They are both, if you take a look at both of them, they're both what we call trigonal pyramidal because their general formula looks like this. And this is because of the lone pair of electrons at the top there on the central atom. Same thing here, the lone pair of electrons there on the central atom. That's why it's AX3E. I do have a video on how to figure out this. I'll link it in the description box below. But the important thing to note is that because of the presence of the lone pair, the charge distribution for both is asymmetrical, which makes both of them polar molecules. So remember, polar molecules technically have dipole-dipole forces. Both of these have dipole-dipole forces. However, one of them has special type, a special type of dipole-dipole forces. And I hope you know which one that is. It is ammonia. So they both have dipole-dipole forces because they're both polar molecules. Again, I have videos on this. I'll link it down below. But ammonia, because of the bond between the nitrogen and the hydrogen, ammonia has hydrogen bonding. Okay, remember hydrogen bonding is when we have a hydrogen with either a nitrogen, an oxygen, or fluorine. We remember it as H NOF. Okay, a hydrogen with a nitrogen, which is the case here or a hydrogen with an oxygen, like in water, or a hydrogen with fluorine, like in hydrogen fluoride. Okay, um, um, hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest type of intermolecular forces. It's stronger than dipole-dipole forces. So therefore, I can write my answer as follows. Phosphine has dipole-dipole forces and London forces between its molecules. Ammonia has hydrogen bonding and London forces between its molecules. So step one, mention the intermolecular, intermolecular forces of both. Then tell me which one is stronger or weaker. So remember the question. The question said, why does phosphine evaporate faster? So we're basically trying to explain why phosphine's forces are weaker in a way. So the dipole-dipole forces in phosphine are weaker than hydrogen bonding. Because it's weaker, phosphine molecules need less energy to overcome the intermolecular forces, 
which is why it evaporates easier than ammonia. So basically, you mention the intermolecular forces of both, you compare the strength, then speak about energy, always speak about energy, and then your conclusion. So I just want you to understand this. Because phosphine has weaker intermolecular forces, ammonia has stronger intermolecular forces. Okay, let's go back to phosphine. Weaker intermolecular forces, um, phosphine will need less energy to overcome the forces. So basically, it's easier to overcome the forces in phosphine, which is why it evaporates easier or faster. In 3.4, you are given the following information, water, ethanol, and bromine are all liquids at room temperature. Which one has the highest vapor pressure? And then 3.5 is a follow-on question, so it says give a reason for the answer to 3.4 by referring to the relative strength of intermolecular forces and boiling points. So you have to mention two things in your answer. So let's take a look at the table quickly, and then we will chat about why. So which one will have a highest vapor pressure? So they mentioned water, boiling point of 100, ethanol, boiling point of 78, and bromine, boiling point of 58.8. So it's clear from the table that because water is the highest boiling point, it has the strongest intermolecular forces. Because bromine has the lowest boiling point, it has the weakest intermolecular forces. And what you need to know about boiling points and vapor pressure is that they are the opposite. So we can almost use the term inversely proportional, but it's basically just if you have a high boiling point, you have a low vapor pressure. If you have a low boiling point, you have a high vapor pressure. And it's got to do, once again, with the intermolecular forces. So because bromine has a low boiling point, we know it has weak intermolecular forces. So it doesn't need a lot of energy to overcome those forces and create vapor when it's going from liquid phase to gas phase. That's why it's easier for bromine to be converted from a liquid to a gas, so it'll have a higher vapor pressure but it has a lower boiling point. So your answer is bromine, and here's your reason. Boiling point of bromine is lower, therefore weaker intermolecular forces. Weaker intermolecular forces means higher vapor pressure. I hope that this has been helpful. I do have other past paper question videos linked down below in the same playlist as this one, so I hope you check those out. I hope to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.